clean water. Spread some clean water on here. And that's just gonna make it where the black liquid charcoal concoction I made up doesn't come out too black. Because I don't want this to be black, I want this to be gray. Just like smudged charcoal. I've done it where I just use dry charcoal powder. And that dry charcoal powder works really well, but I'm always experimenting, I'm always trying new stuff. And I'm trying to make a charcoal background using the same charcoal mix, but instead of black, if I wet it down like this, it should dilute that charcoal liquid that I made enough to where it's, it, it's hopefully gonna look more gray. We'll find out. Okay, so that's enough water. There's my charcoal concoction. Let's find out. Oh yeah, definitely grayed out. That's awesome. Awesome. That's all it needed, just so I can get it gray. I don't have to, you know, why do I want to do it this way? Why not just use the charcoal powder like I, you see me doing in the other videos? Well, I was trying to find a way that would be uh, cleaner. The charcoal powder on the paper is really just so, so dusty and dirty. It's, it's it just makes a big old mess. And so I thought I'd do this in the hopes of keeping things cleaner. And it looks like it's gonna work out. So I'm gonna get a napkin. I'm just gonna, it's a little dark. I'm gonna swish it around here. I thought actually to add a little tooth to this, I'm gonna use a little bit of clear gesso. And it has a, an aggregate in it. It has a, I added to this clear gesso, um, something called pumice, it's a powder. And it just, I use fine, really fine pumice powder. And what that does, it's gonna add enough tooth to this because that's sometimes that's a problem with these watercolor papers. They uh, they won't have enough tooth where you can draw on it with a dry material like pastel or charcoal, and it becomes a little problematic in that the pastel or the charcoal or whatever dry material doesn't want to stick to it as well. And so that's why I'm doing this. And this is kind of a first timer right here. You know, I've done these ideas separately but I've never actually put all these ideas together into one idea or into a video in that case and I so far I'm liking the results visually what I see and we'll see when it dries we'll see what it does and what it looks like so okay we'll see what this bad boy looks like when she's dry and hopefully I came up with a uh, a solution to having smooth paper you know this should work and it should keep it nice and uh, toothy where the material wants to grab on to the surface so I will Come back in a little bit after it dries and 
I will fill it up and if it feels like fine sandpaper, I know I accomplished what I wanted to do. And then I think I'm gonna use this and do a red chalk. I've never done red chalk on a little homemade paper like this, at least not that I can think of. Maybe I'll post a video on that, something uh, different for my videos. All right, so we'll see you in a little bit. So here's the uh, that brown butcher paper. I cut it down to like 12 by 18 or something. Um, I'm gonna put a coat of the uh, clear gesso mix that I like because of the uh, aggregate that I was talking about in other videos. And the idea is to give it a little tooth and see if I can keep that brown color because it is clear so it should dry transparent. Basically just let everything show through. And my idea is to try and see if I can have this very inexpensive paper which comes in a huge roll work as potentially pastel paper. It's a little too smooth for pastel. I've used it for pastels on it. And I've used charcoal. Charcoal works great because it's such a dark material, but the pastels uh, being much softer tends to, it doesn't tend to have enough tooth to hold pastel to it. So this is my number one attempt and I will see how this comes out and I will let you know. All right, so here's the final results. Has nice texture to it. Uh, you know, it's got a little tooth. Not a lot, because I don't, I don't make it where it has a lot of tooth, because then it could be uh, problematic to use. So what I did off camera that you didn't see was I let this dry quite a bit, and then I put a couple of photo albums. My wife has a bunch of photo albums, real big, fat, thick ones. They're nice and heavy, so I put one here and one here just to kind of help to flatten it out. And then I let it dry for another, I don't know, 20 minutes or whatever. And it gave me this result. So I know you can't feel it, but uh, you can just take my word for it. It has a little bit of a really fine sandpaper feel to it. Really fine. You don't want it to be too rough. Because then it's going to be, uh, you're, you're, you know, your drawing is going to look like impressions drawing. So uh, it worked. Came out pretty good. And here is the brown paper that I started on a separate little video. I'm gonna combine it with this video. And it's the butcher block, or should I think, not butcher block, butcher paper. That brown paper you can buy in the paint department. Uh, I, I guess I didn't let it, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a whole bunch of wrinkles. Um, it's still a little moist. I This paper is not really good for sucking up a lot of water. It's not watercolor paper, it's thinner. I let it dry for a while and I put some uh, books on top of it, and I guess the books uh, kind of gave it these little creases and wrinkles. But that's not a big deal, because another thing what I've done to these thinner papers is I'll take an iron, and I'll just put on a flat surface, and I'll just iron out all these wrinkles. And a lot of times, um, once they're dry, you can get a lot of these wrinkles out of it. And sometimes I'll use a little spritzer bottle and just kind of wet the surface a little bit. And then I iron all those uh, wrinkles and wet spots out of it. And I'll do the same to the back. And uh, sometimes you can get it to look pretty smooth. So, and this was just a clear gesso uh, with a little bit of the uh, pumice in the gesso to give it a little bit more tooth. And it's got a little bit, here's some without it, kind of smooth. And then here's the area I painted. You can kind of see where the wrinkles stop. That's why I painted. It's got a little bit of a tooth, so I wanna let's see if I can use this for a uh, some more red chalk and maybe try some pastels on this uh, sort of paper. All right, so give this a shot and try it out for yourself. You know, see what it what happens. See if it works for you, and um, it just just gives you a really great brown background, and or in this case, that nice gray background. And, uh, you know, it's always fun to experiment and use different materials um, with your drawings. If not, I think you, you end up getting bored real easily. All right, so I'll see you on the next time. Uh, throw one of these out there. See you.